Look at this. I never see anything like it. Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is uh, last part of April, the 20, 29th and uh, 2023. It's a nice day out. We've had a week of rain. This is the first really nice day the bees have had to get out and forage in probably six days. And uh, prior to that, uh, they didn't have a whole lot of forage time. They did have some, but uh, we have a lot of hives that have high population, low food stores. Nectar flow started, but they haven't been able to get out. So they've been consuming all of their stores. And uh, I just got through feeding a hive over there that uh, looked like they were purging some of their brood, uh, some of the larvae. They just kicked them out because they don't have anything to feed them. So uh, hopefully that'll get them going. So I've got three pretty good sized hives right here that are really strong and it's basically swarm season. Today's a prime swarm day after all this rain, nice day and in the afternoon. Uh, so I'm kind of keeping my ear out listening, <clears throat> but I'm going to get into the, these three hives here and I anticipate finding some swarm cells and I'm going to try and make a split or two here and backfill some of these vacant spots I have where I lost about a third of my hives over winter. I've lost uh, 10, 11 hives and I need to work on that. So additionally, I've got six queens coming in three weeks from wildflower meadows in uh, Southern California. So I, I'll, I'll be using some of those as well, but uh, I don't want these hives to swarm on me and lose some of my bees. So I'm gonna try and control that and do some uh, artificial swarm splits where I can, if I can find that original queen, I'll go ahead and pull her out and put her in a newt and uh, get her on out of there and let them requeen with the swarm cells. So let's get in here and see what we find. Uh, as strong as these are, I'm anticipating uh, these two and the one right there, I'm probably gonna find quite a few swarm cells in them. So let's get started. Looks nice and strong from this perspective. Let's uh, pop these boxes apart and I'll look underneath. These bees here might be, they look a little lethargic. The hive doesn't have a whole lot of weight, but it's not feather light. So right in there is where I'll be looking for swarm cells. So what they'll do is they'll pull, start pulling down drone brood and then around that drone brood, you'll see some queen cells hanging down. So right here, they're building the drone brood. And I'm not seeing any queen cells, which is good. So a little bit of that drone brood is down here. Sometimes your queen cells will be uh, protrude down in between, down in here. And when you raise it up, you'll actually pull them apart. But you, if you've had that many, you're going to have some up here that'll be good viable ones that, that will still be good. You're always going to break apart a few. So what I can do to this hive here to slow down their swarm urge is I can scrape this off. And they'll be less apt to build these queen cells in such a hurry. That's what I found anyway. So since I have some queens coming in, I'm going to go ahead and scrape this off so this hive here hopefully won't swarm on me. Now they still can build cells, uh, queen cells, up on the frames that you won't see by doing this method here. So it's not a foolproof way, but it's pretty good. If you're just doing a quick search for queen cells, this is this is the way to go right here. So this hive's fine. It's not going to swarm anytime soon. Get these bees on down so I can set that on there with the excluder. Well, 
Once that nectar flow kicks in strong, when you have a workforce like that, they can fill this up fast in a matter of days. So you gotta be ready. That's why sometimes on these stronger hives, I just go for two right off the bat. We'll see what we find here. Yeah. This top super's full of bees. No weight to it. So, you know, there's not a lot in there yet. There's none in there yet, so. Got another lid here I'd put over these supers just to keep that honey smell out of the air. This hive is heavy, so there's a lot of stores in here already. So this kind of inspection, you don't care about the queen or anything. You're just looking for swarm cells. If you find swarm cells, that's when you want to find your queen and get her out of here if she hasn't swarmed already. So here's what we're looking at. We got some stuff there. We may be a little early yet. So that there looks like a queen cup. And it's empty. You got these little starts of queen cups here, 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 and here. So we can knock those off of there and prevent them from swarming. And uh, so this will just be a nice strong hive and that, that'll be good. So we'll go ahead and clean those up. So that's er way early stages. In fact, those might be some that are left from uh, prior year. We'll go ahead and get them off of there. You know, they're not even hanging down at all yet. Get this drone brood out of here. See, there's a drone larva right there. And there's no dots on him. We'll roll him around and see. That's where the mites like to lay their eggs is in drone cells. Yeah, no mites. I'll just drop him down in there and They'll drag him out the front door or he'll get consumed. So another benefit to going ahead and putting on two supers, if you've got a really strong hive like this, it gives a lot of space for the bees. Cuts down on some bearding probably later on in the summer. Just gives them more space. Uh, and the less crowded they are, the less swarmers they'll have. So that will help with that. That and uh, cleaning out that drone brood down there like that, that helps slow down the swarming. All right, let's, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop videoing and I'm gonna do a few more. And if I find some swarm cells, we'll go from there and uh, start doing a split. Okay, real quick, I wanna show you something I found that's interesting. So the first hive I went in, uh, number six right here. Uh, so, so I reduced the entrance down here, on, or I opened the entrance down here. I took that block of wood off of this one because they had a little entrance and they were all crowded up. So I opened that up and I thought I'd do it over here. And uh, if you notice, these bees right here have been going in and out right here because that, board, that uh, box back there is rotted somewhat. So, uh, I, I took blocks off of here and I started cleaning this out and there's like dead bees. There's like a wax moth larva right there. And uh, I thought, I'm going to pull this apart and look at it. So, so my concerns uh, about them not having enough food, I think it's pretty valid on this hive. You can see some of what I'm talking about. So if you look down in here, you'll see the white larva down there. So they're aborting their larva off of the frames. Uh, they're actually just pulling them out and throwing them out because there's not enough food to feed all the population here. So it's got those two honey supers on, I set aside right there. So I'm going to uh, move those somewhere else 
and I'm gonna put some feed on this hive here to get it revived, put some liquid feed on there. So I'm gonna get started doing that. Okay, here we go. So you wanna hold it upside down until it quits dripping. And then you can move it over the hole. So we'll put this up over here, keep other bees out of it. And that's gonna give this hive here a nice uh, boost of nutrition. Because they are starving out. So what caught my eye as I was walking down, I was trying to figure out, you know, which hives I wanted to, to go in and look at. I was checking my notes and I looked down here and I saw dead bees there and I go, oh, that's weird. Where'd they come from? So, and if you notice, I, know, I looked real close. They're, some of them aren't quite dead. They're, they're just barely hanging on. And I'm thinking they came out of this hole right here. And I did see one crawl out of that hole. That's where I treat oxalic acid. So that tells me there may be a bunch of bees on the bottom board that are dying out. But uh, then I went around front. And I see the same thing. A bunch of bees down here on this brick, crawling around. And the entrance is clogged with bees. But I do see a lot of bees uh, around the entrance there. So there may be some life in there so i'm not sure what caused this this may be starvation now like i said we had drought and then we had some rain and then it wouldn't stop raining then the bees couldn't get out and forage they went through all their food stores so let's and i have a super on here so this was a decent hive it was uh, medium strong i had in my notes so let's let's see what we find in here and maybe we can save it yeah, this is uh, quite a bummer to see this. So it's April 29th. We should be having a good nectar flow right now, which we just came off a week of rain. And we had some intermittent rain before that, but the bees just couldn't get out and forage. They couldn't get out of the hive. So if they didn't have a lot of food in their hive, they they went through it. So this is a honey super. I see a few bees up here. Not many. There's a few up here. Again, it's double deep hive. I see bees over here. Let me check the weight on this. Well, it's not lightweight. That's odd. Maybe it's the weight of the bees I'm feeling, but it didn't feel like it's totally empty. So I, I put some uh, blank frames for them to draw out up here in the top. And I put honey to the edges, which it may be all gone. Yeah, there's no honey there. That's empty. And no honey here, it's empty. Kind of looking for a queen. So let's get into that bottom box, see what we find. So here's our pollen patty, what's left of it. Empty. And that's a blank frame. Empty. So here we've got, here's some dead bees and some brood. They're, they're digging their heads into the brood. It's kind of weird. I think though what we're seeing is starvation. So you can see some bees that are like dead where they're they've dug their heads down into the brood like they're consuming it uh, these bees in this brood the brood's not emerging there's some there that's emerged and their tongues are sticking out i don't know i don't think this is a foul brood issue i think it's although it has been kind of wet 
but uh, I think this is a starvation. I do see a lot of dead bees down in the bottom. Let's look at each frame. Again, I've not seen any sign of any food yet. And here's a bunch of dead uh, larvae in the frames, kind of like before. So I think what we're seeing is there's nothing to feed these emerging bees when they come out. Again, all the young are dying out. The caps are either chewed off and they started pulling them out or I'm not sure what's going on, but it's not like they're evolving, uh, emerging naturally. No food in here at all. I've never experienced starvation like this. I th assuming that's what it is, I think that's what we're seeing. So I've never had this problem. I think this is my 10th or 11th year of beekeeping. You know, end of April, it's always good nectar flow. Bees are doing good. And they've usually had enough honey to hold them over. Same thing here. So there's good brood in here, good brood pattern. And uh, they just start dying off. So let's, uh, I hope the queen's okay. Let's uh, go ahead and pull this off and clean up that bottom board. Get some, some liquid feed on them. And uh, we'll go from there. And we probably should even reduce this. So I'll take out these blanks. Get the few bees up here that are over there in the back in the hive. Boy, look at that. That is a lot of dead bees. I don't know. That is just a huge biomass of dead bees. Look at that. It's just thousands so this was a good hive that just totally collapsed get some uh, liquid feed on them real quick the bees that are laying here their tongues aren't sticking out like it was possibly poison Still a lot of bees in there, considering how many's on the, was dead in the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna get some liquid feed, get over here real quick. All right, Let's see how they react to that. So they'll start consuming this and passing it around and uh, they'll start reviving. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So that's what I hope. Uh, man, it's in bad shape. These bees up here, they're, they're just, they're sickly looking. Like they're, they're either starving or they are very sick. I see them crowding in there now. So I think, I think they're hungry. I'm going to remove this for now because I don't want uh, that little notch having an opening for other bees to get in here because uh, I got honey supers out. I don't want this to get robbed and then start putting it in honey supers because you don't want sugar water in your honey. So that's a 50-50 with a little bit of pro health in it and this will keep it blocked off from other bees.
So real quick, just a quick update. Been going through all my hives, pulling supers. I've been pouring food onto the, or liquid onto the draw, empty drawn frames and putting them in the hives because I don't have enough feeders. And there's my 50-50 uh, there. So I've been doing that on all these. I got to this hive 27. Man, it is unbelievable. So I had two supers on this. It was a super strong hive. I did find the queen. She's on that uh, third frame from the right there. So, uh, but man, look at all the bees in there. Unbelievable. So this hive is just wiped out. Starved to death. So I'm going to preserve these frames here because this is where my queen is. And uh, this is all full of brood. She had laid all this up. I don't know if this is still going to emerge or not, but look at this. I never see anything like it. Just total starvation. I bet there's 20, 30,000 bees there. I don't know. There's a bunch. So I'm just going to dump this back here. I'm going to reduce it down to a single. Get my queen back in here. I thought I was doing some overkill to mix this whole uh, 25 pounds of sugar into this bucket. But uh, I'm going to use every bit of it. This was a really strong hive too. That's what killed them. Too much population and no food. I'm guessing that brood is dead. We'll go ahead and put it in here. Yeah, little spotty unemerged brood. It may have uh, got chilled because it was a beast to cover it. I don't know. Yeah, so major bummer. Man, I don't know. If it's even worth trying to save these few bees here. So they buried their, they're buried in, they've dug into where the brood is. I assume that's so they were starving to death and they just they ate the brood see the bee butts that or they're going for food in there I don't know never seen this before I'm just gonna set this on top of uh, this inner cover here so the live bees can uh, go on down through that little hole and the uh, dead bees will just stay behind and that should be enough to sustain them for a little bit Man, the nectar flow ought to really be kicking in here just any time. All the rain we had, these were stuck in the hive. Okay, man, major bummer.
Yeah, that's a bummer. This was a, a nice strong hive. It had honey in it. It was all set up uh, for success and the weather didn't cooperate here in the spring. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. They're starving to death. So I need to make sure, and I, like I said, I fed some others that, that looked low and uh, this one got too low apparently. That meant that much population and nothing to eat. So it looked to me like they started cannibalizing the, the young. I'd seen some others that were dumping the young out. So uh, we'll check back on this uh, in a few days and see if they're perked up. Hopefully that'll give them enough boost until uh, they can get out and forage and the nectar flow's going. Uh, so with all this rain, it takes a little bit. Uh, it kind of washes the nectar away, but then it'll, it'll kick in really good. So just waiting on that to get started. So that's it. Give me a thumbs up on the video. If you have any ideas about this, let me know if you think it's something else. And uh, we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.